Welcome back to Dominique Medici Art Academy. I'm Dominique Medici. Thanks for tuning in. So it's day three. And in the previous lessons, we were looking at the circle. And we started by drawing a circle. And then in lesson two, we drew two circles, but saw them as one larger shape. So we're kind of continuing in the same way. If you're new to the channel, uh, watch those videos first and then come to this video. It'll make more sense. And if you're new, please also subscribe and you'll be notified of upcoming videos. Okay, so in today's lesson, we're going from one object to two objects, all right? And we're kind of starting to build a composition. So first we have to swap out the page and also we need to get another object, right? So here we have two, two pairs. Um, well, I don't know, maybe it'd be better if this was an apple. Uh, yeah, let's, let's have a pear and an apple. It'll be slightly different. So I think if I just shake this really hard, oh, uh, that, I was not expecting that. Ah, there we go. Much better. So now we just need to get these right here. All right. Right, so let's start with a fresh piece of paper and make sure you've sharpened a couple of your pencils. So where do we start? Kind of where we left off, right? We just pick up that thread. So we start with gesture, right? We're just gonna kind of go for it. And we're feeling for the shape, right? The first circle is the bottom of the pair. We have our second circle above. If we look at where this one is in relation to this one, it looks like it rests right on top, right? It's not quite a full circle. There is a little bit of an overlap. Um, this pair is slightly taller. I might be making mine a little too, too short, but this is what we do. We first just get a general shape here. Once we have our general shape, then we can start looking at the relationships at maybe like, you know, if, if we're thinking about a perfect circle, right? Every part of it is perfectly curved, but in nature, things are rarely like that. So some parts are flattening out. There are some points where these planes, right? If we consider this as a plane, right? There is points where two planes meet and we get an angle. So let's just start becoming aware of these as we're drawing the contour. So, right, one of the most obvious ones is on this right side. We can see we get a little bit of a plane here. If I look where that plane change happens in relation to the big circle, it looks like it's, you know, maybe halfway. That's a good place to start. And we go around our form looking for those plane changes and these points of intersection, right? That's the idea. Same thing for the circle above. It's pretty round, but there are certain points which are slightly flatter. So the top of the pair, the side of the pair, the left side of the pair, they all flatten out a bit. So we sketch it as we see it. Now again, keeping the pencil pretty light, letting your lines be light touch, not too many of them. And if it gets a little too dark too quick, you can always slightly erase
to get back to a fainter or slightly more ghosted image of what was there. Right, so the other thing I'm noticing is like the character of this pair. The belly on this side is wider or fuller than the belly on this side, right? So let's see if we can get that to read in the pair that we're drawing. Not only is it fuller on this side than this side, but this side has a longer plane and a shorter curve at the bottom. Then I'm looking at how this smaller circle up here meets the bigger one at the bottom. We have this straight line coming down, then it sort of bumps out a bit, right? We bump out a bit on the other side. It's much more gradual. This edge leans out a little further and the curve is, it's full, but you know, in a way there's almost a straight line that runs through this side. So let's see if we can get that. I also look at where this point and this point, how they relate to each other, there's just a little bit of an angle between them, right? So I'll just make that just a little lower. And again, right, when you're searching out a form, keep it light, strengthen it up, and as you're getting more and more confident about that contour, you can strengthen the line. All right, so. Right, so drawing is an additive and subtractive process. So don't be afraid to erase. But also don't just rub things out wholesale without thinking first about them. All right, so now I'm wanting to just lighten this line up. See, this is one of the reasons you don't go too dark too fast, is it's harder to rub out lines that don't work. All right, so we have kind of a decent shape here. All right, so then the other thing that we already know how to do is sketch out the cast shadow. So we're just gonna kind of rough it in Right, just noticing a little bit of how tall is it in relation to some part of this. Is it as tall as maybe this is wide? Again, we're not gonna to talk too much about measurements just yet, that's coming, but it is useful to just start becoming aware of this shape in relation to this shape, right? Okay. Okay, so if we were to say that that's roughly okay, let's move on to the next shape. Now again, right, this is kind of the first time we're getting a real relationship developing. There is a relationship between the object or the pair and the cast shadow, but now we're getting another relationship of another object and there's an interaction between these two objects. Look at the way the cast shadow goes across the form of the pair and groups up with the shadow being cast by the pair. So it's interesting, right? It's going from something simple to something more complex. And as we're developing towards complexity, it's always a good idea to try to see the bigger picture, right? Any good drawing principle is also a life principle, right? So whenever we're noticing things around us becoming complex, 
seeing some bigger principle that encompasses all of it is a great way for us to gain perspective, right? Like standing on the mountaintop, everything is clear and in view. So we kind of want to try and keep that kind of perspective when we're drawing. Always see the bigger shape, right? So one thing you might be aware of at this point is if we look here at our print, this really is the biggest shape, isn't it? This proportion, look at this proportion, right? So it's the biggest shape and it contains several smaller shapes, right? There's a shape of the background, the shape of the table. There's this large shape of the pear and the apple as one shape together. And then there's the individual shapes and the shape of the cast shadow in relation to the objects. So there's lots of shapes when you really begin to look at it. But what we're trying to do is think of it as a whole. Always thinking of how each part relates to a greater uh, unified kind of object. So for the purposes of this lesson, we won't talk about relating these to the overall page. Let's just focus on the relationship between these two things. We'll grow from here to encompass the page as a whole, but let's take it slow. Let's not overwhelm ourselves since we're learning a lot of new things, right? One step at a time. Okay. So if I just look at the apple and I look at it in relation to the pear, right? There are a couple of things I just want to notice about it. One, it's lower, right? It's lower than the pear. Two, I'm looking at the height to the width of the apple. It's a little longer than it is wide, right? Then I'm thinking, well, what about how wide is the apple in relation to the pear? Is it wider? Is it the same? Or is it narrower? So, and again, before you measure it, you just want to observe it. Just guess, right? And for anyone new, the image is in the uh, description below, right? So I first want to guess before actually measuring. So my sense is just looking at the width, the width of the apple to the width of the pear, it looks like it's just a little bit bigger. So here's a great way to measure. You just take your forefinger and the tip of the pencil. My tip of the pencil is resting on the edge of the pear. My finger is resting on the edge of the apple. Now I'm going to bring this over so that my finger is resting on the edge of the apple and the tip is, as you can see now, beyond the pear. So for sure, it's definitely bigger than the pear. So that's nice, right? That gives us a little insight about the relationship. So let's just, again, same way we've done this previously, let's just sketch this in getting a little sense of where this might be. Don't worry if it seems wildly off. It doesn't matter. All right, so we can see that it just slightly overlaps the pair. And as I'm sketching in the apple, I'm beginning to notice some of these plane breaks, these little points where the apple is a little flatter and where another plane is a little bit flatter and where they meet, right? It's very useful for us. So we slowly refine as we're developing this shape, right? So I'm going to take a quick measurement now and I'm going to compare it and I want to see, is it about the same distance beyond as in the reference, right? So we're becoming aware of the concept of comparative measuring, right? So it is what it sounds like. We're comparing one length to another. So in this case, it looks like my apple is a little too wide. So I can see that I don't necessarily want to make it smaller on this side. 
because the overlap on the pair looks good. So let's pull it in on the other side. Right, so this is one of the reasons we keep our sketch light so that these corrections are easy to make. Okay, right, and then just rub out whatever it is you don't need. Okay. So that's looking a little better. I'll take another measurement. So that looks about right. It looks like we have the right width. So now that we know that the width is related nicely to the width of the pear, let's now compare the height of the apple to itself. So right when we're looking at it, for sure it looks a little bit longer than it does wide. Let's take that same width and now compare it to the length. And we can see that we're just a bit shorter. So this is looking okay. Um, let's just measure it. Let's just see, right? So it looks like it could be a little bit taller. Now the question is this, right? Does it want to be taller on the bottom? Meaning, does the shape want to extend below or do we want to extend the shape above? This is where we need to start looking at the relationship of this shape to the shape a little more closely. So where is the top of this form if we continue this line through? Well, it looks like it's kind of almost touching these two points, right? So I can ask myself, is that happening on my drawing? And lo and behold, it's a bit low. So that little bit of difference that we saw, if I extend this up, it gives us what we need. All right, and again, we can just lose the lines that we don't need. Okay, so at this point, what's not here yet? Okay, well, there's two things. One is we don't have the stems, but again, that's a detail. We'll get to it. But I think more importantly, let's get this other cast shadow. Let's get that drawn in so that we're reading this big shape all together, right? Okay, so we could do something like this, right? And we'll just feel it out. So let's just take a look at the amount of space we see under the pear in relation to the apple. Right, it's just a little bit smaller than over here. Let that be a little bit of a guide for us. And then let's see where this point meets the pair, almost through the center, right? So come down and it's somewhere over here. Right, so we're not measuring too much, we're just using our observation to check some relationships, right? You know, I'm just noticing that this is looking too long, but somehow my measurement seemed correct. So, but you know what? We have to trust our eyes. If it doesn't look right, it probably isn't right. So let's go back and measure a little more carefully. What I'm thinking is, you know what? The apple, it really does almost look as long as it does wide. And if I measure a little more carefully, it actually is. So. Let's take a look here, right? Let's measure the width. And because we know the width is good in relation to the pair, right? So I don't want to change how wide it is because then I'm changing that bigger relationship, which we feel pretty good with at this point. So that tells me, okay, it's the height that has to change. One of the biggest challenges that we're going to face as we're developing our drawing and painting skills is knowing which correction to make. I don't think we have so much problem seeing what the issues are, but often we have a problem understanding which one or which part we should correct because as we change one thing, it affects other things. Yeah, that makes sense.
So let's take a look here, right? I want to change the height. And what this is telling me is that the bottom wants to come up roughly to about here, right? I also knew it was the bottom because again, at the top, we're lining up nicely with these little points on the pair. So that clearly tells us, bring, up, bring it up from the bottom. So again, we just observe and correct. Observe and refine. Okay, that's looking better. But again, we are widest at this upper kind of half or third of the apple, whereas the pear, in a way, we're widest at the lowest third of the pear. So it's interesting that there's this little relationship between them. So let's make that a little more clear. So remember, if your lines are getting a little too thick, just rub it out, go back in, refine it. Now that we have a rough shape for the apple and pear, let's again revisit the cast shadow. So at this point, let's also look at the stems. In this case, the pear, we have a little angle like this. And on the apple, we have an angle running in the opposite direction. And now we're just indicating the inner part of the apple and the stem coming out of the top of the pear. Two smaller circles or ellipses, right? Mirroring the ellipses of the cast shadow. So these two shapes are really one shape and we're relating them through the width. Taking the width of the apple, using that to understand the length of the apple as well as the width in relation to the pear. With more time we can continue to refine the contour of the apple and pear, but we've introduced an important concept, the idea of a relationship to use a measurement to relate two separate objects. But more importantly, even just by erasing the boundary between them, we can see that they are actually one bigger object.
So where do we go from here? In the next lesson, we continue to talk about relationships and we'll introduce some new concepts like plumb lines, horizontals, tilts, and angles. If you haven't already, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next lesson.